Everybody has the desire to do something. But they don't have that, they, they don't know how to really complete the process of dedicating themselves and having the discipline to do it. If you got the desire, you got to match, match that desire with your dedication and you got to match it with your discipline. It may not happen at the moment that you want it to, but you got to understand the process. Everybody wants it yesterday. What happens is a lot of people set goals and they have this big goal and they look at it like this giant staircase. And they're like, that just seems impossible. I can't, I, there's no way. It looks too hard. It looks too, too much work. And they don't, ever, they don't ever start. They set a goal. Yeah, I want to be at the top of that staircase. It's easy to write that down. But when they go to actually start climbing, the, they just go, ah, that's just I'm too. Sure. But if all you did was, Look at the first step and get on that first step. And then when you're on that step, just look at the next step. That's it. Don't look up. Just look at that next step. You got to understand that it's not going to be easy. People think that it's, that there's no challenges. Again, people want it yesterday. Most people want the convenience of transformation without the inconvenience. What we do is we kind of check out because it feels overwhelming. Or we check out because we're afraid. Or we check out because we start listening to self-doubt. And then we make these teeny tiny decisions all day long. We don't even realize it. A decision to not get up on time. A decision to not eat the right thing. A decision to snap at your kids. A decision to not speak in a meeting, a decision to not look for a job, like whatever it is. All day long, these tiny decisions that take you so far off track. And then you wake up and, and you, you look at your life and you think, how the hell did I get here? The reason why a lot of people won't become who they want is because they're too attached to who they've been. And you hear it all the time when people say, I've always been this way. Okay, well if that's working for you, keep doing that. Every single person who has ever done anything worthwhile or exceptional or difficult or extraordinary, anyone, whether it's great artists or authors or mathematicians or whatever the f it is, everyone encounters difficulties. There is no easy road. It does not exist. It is impossible. Everyone has issues. When you come up with excuses for why other people are successful and you're not, that is dangerous. When you give yourself an escape, yeah, well, that's easy for you to say, you know, you do this, you do this, you do this, you trust me, everybody has a hard road. You have to look at the bigger picture. Um, you have to have belief in yourself and you have to have faith in yourself. And faith is not really just having or understanding that everything will be okay, but faith is is, is, is understanding that if things don't go your way or if it doesn't turn out the way you want to, it's still going to be okay. We all go through hard times. We all go through depression. We all do go through doubt and, and then moments in your life where it's really difficult. That is what makes you a person. And those difficult moments are what build your character. Show me a great man who's the son of a great man. You know, that's what we're saying. These kids that are born billionaires, you're never going to be a self-made person. You have a backup trust for your backup trust for your trust. Feel the fear and do it anyway. If you don't push yourself, you don't find out where the boundaries of your current skill level are, and you don't fall, you don't get any better. No matter how talented, experienced, or privileged somebody else is, you can beat anybody at anything. You can accomplish any goal you set your sights on over time. If you are just more consistent than everybody else around you, you will win every race that you run. You're one of the world's richest people. Um, your company is one of the world's richest companies. He is, without question, one of the greatest business leaders, investors, philanthropists of all time to Warren Buffett.
If we want to change the world, we change ourselves. Change ourselves is more important and easier. You're your own biggest asset by far. I mean, you've got, you've got all kinds of potential. Most people go through life using up a very, very small part of their potential. And so anything you do that invests in yourself, uh, is, that's the best investment you can possibly make. To transform what you see on the outside, you've got to transform who you are on the inside. Just like a human growth, you can never, this body can never grow, 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 grow. Certain time, the slow of growth of a body will slow, but you should grow your mind, grow your culture, grow your value, grow your wisdom. You control your destiny. You can create what you want to create. You have gifts that nobody else on the planet has. You have talent. You have everything. Everything you need to become whatever you want is right here. Believe what you're doing. Love it, whether people like it, don't like it, be simple. And like the word, life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you can get, right? I never know I would be here talking to you and talking to Charlie Rose. I never know. I just made one choice when I was 16 years old that I was no longer going to be a victim and that I was going to be a hero to myself and that I was going to change my life. And I had no idea that it would lead me here. And no idea I'd be here in the set talking to you, doing what we're doing. No idea. It was never part of the plan. The only thing I knew is I didn't want to be the victim and this other trajectory of life. I wanted something different. So I made that choice. The choices you make today, tomorrow, they might affect you for the next year, five years, ten years, or for the rest of your life. A lot of young people lose hope, lose vision, and start to complain. What does being a victim get you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So if you're getting nothing from one direction, why not turn around and go to the other direction? Path of victimization is nothing. Path of hero, you might as well give it a shot, and all the different cool things that happen along the way are just amazing. There's never a lack of opportunity. Never. If, if you don't think there's an opportunity there, you haven't found it. And so it's not, it's not the opportunities, it's you. Remember, the mind controls a body. The body does not control the mind. What makes these guys special and successful in everything they do is not their physical gifts, it's their mental toughness. Things are just happening and it's because of one choice. And that's it. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking you've made all these different choices and your life is in one direction, make one different choice. Just one. And see where it goes. The most important thing is that you have a vision. That you have a goal. Because without that vision and without that goal, again, you're drifting around and you're never going to end up anywhere. People don't become successful just by accident. I would follow my passion. I mean, whatever turns you on. You know, I, uh, uh, I found, I was lucky, I found something early that, that turned me on. But you don't want to take a job just for the money. You don't want to take a job for an organization that you really don't feel good about or work for people that you don't feel good about. You, you really want to be excited when you get out of bed every morning. Follow your passion. Do something you're very passionate about. And don't try to chase what is kind of the hot passion of the day. You gotta know what you're good at, you gotta know what you're marginal at, and you gotta know what you suck at. And you've gotta find people who complement your skills. You know, and you gotta know what type of thinker you are, what, you gotta know how you work, you know. And once you start to understand who you are, then you can start finding places where you'll be successful and you won't be, you won't be lying to yourself. You can have any habit you want to be. You can be, you can be lazy. You can be prompt. You can be, you can be late. You can be honest. You can cut corners. I mean, you have all these choices, and those are choices for you to make. Nobody else is going to make them for you. And I would suggest that you play this little game with me too. Uh, think about the person you would most like to be in life. So maybe it's one of your contemporaries. Maybe it's somebody a little older. But pick out the person you admire the most. The person that you'd change places with. And then write down why you admire them. Just put it on a piece of paper. And then figure out the person that you would least like to change places with you. Who really turns you off? Who do you find repulsive? 
and list the reasons why that person turns you off so much. And then look at that list. And you'll find that everything on the left-hand side, what you admire in other people, the qualities they bring to life, you'll find those are things you can do yourself. It's very simple. You've got to apply yourself, but the habits you form in doing that early on will carry you through life. If you do that, two or three years from now, if you go through the same exercise, you'll find out that the person you admire the most is yourself. Baby steps count, too, as long as you're going forward. And one day you add all those baby steps up, and you might be surprised at where you can get to. So you got to really have a specific order to me to have that vision that I want to be Mr. Universe, that I want to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time. That was a great vision and that specifically to look like Reg Park and to be up there on that stage and to lift the trophy overhead and to win the championship over and over and over again. So that was a great goal. I put pictures of Reg Park and of Sonny Liston, of boxers and of Ali and of powerlifters and weightlifters all over my bedroom uh, you know, uh, wall so that every day when I go to sleep, every day when I wake up, I look at those pictures and they motivate me. You need that motivation and then therefore you have this kind of imprint in front of you all the time and you know exactly what you're chasing. The people you look up to are going to form your vision of what the world is you know, how you want to be in later life. This is why I always smiled when I was in the gym. People always came up to me and said, why are you smiling? You're working out five hours a day. You're doing the same as the other guys, but the other guys have a sour face. They're pissed off that they have to do another rep or another set or something. I looked forward to, I looked forward to another thousand set, uh, reps of, of sit-ups. I looked forward to another 500 pounds of, of, of uh, leg press or squat. I looked forward to doing more and more curls until my arms fall off. Why? Because I knew that every rep that I did and every set that I did and more weights that I lifted, I get one step closer to turning that vision into reality. You have to act on your passion. You have to act on your inner drive. Don't let those feelings stay inside of you. You got to know what to do with them. You got to know how to make them work in order to get what you want. Don't keep it inside. Most of you are not doing what you want to do with your life because you're worried about somebody else's opinion. Don't let anybody steer you away from where you want to be in life. Not your parents, not your teachers, not your guidance counselors. If you have a passion and you feel confident that you can do it, go after it. The hell with everybody else. This is your life. You have the tools and resources. When you wake up every day, you know that you're blessed you've been given an opportunity that most people in life have not. You have the ability to live your dreams. Decide, commit, act, succeed, repeat. Good, great, unstoppable. Every team, every work atmosphere, no matter what you do, must consist of those three personalities. If you have those three personalities and you can identify the individuals that have those three personalities, you're guaranteed success in whatever you do. If you want to be successful in life, do not seek success. Seek to become a person of value. Make yourself valuable and they'll pay for you. The mind of a champion, the relentless pursuit of always winning, always conquering, always thinking what to do next is instilled in all of us. If you don't have what you want, stop telling yourself the story because you don't have the money, you don't have the time. That's bullshit. It's because you haven't committed yourself where you would burn your boats. If you want to take the island, burn your boats, and you will take the island, because people, when they're going to either die or succeed, tend to succeed. But most of us give ourselves a way out, and that's why we don't have what we want. So if you and I really want to know what's going to take to get your dream and make it real, 
It's to stop all the things you told yourself that aren't. And I'm here to tell you what I said at the top of our discussion. 80% of success is psychology and 20%. This is the secret. As long as you're working toward your inner goal, your dream, then success is possible. The most important element is for you to be able to do this. To be able to establish, most importantly, where you really are in your life today. Where are you? And where do you really want to go? What's going to create this extraordinary life? And to look at it brand new. Because some of you right now, if you continue the direction you're going, are going to be successful and unfulfilled, unhappy, and stressed. You have to be self-disciplined. It's necessary for everything you do in your life. If I want a better life tomorrow, I need to start working on it today. Ambition is a minute-by-minute, day-by-day mentality. To have the ambition to work towards a better family life, a newer car, a bigger house, a financially secure future, you have to live it every moment. If living a successful life was easy, I'm sure more people would be successful. If where you are, is not what you saw, then what you are in is temporary. What's your dream? The dream is the most valuable, delicate gift you could ever have given to you. And there are people out there that will try to steal it every single day of your life. We have the ability to live a lifestyle that fits our goals and dreams. You have the ability to put together any type of lifestyle you want in your mind and have it come true. It's an ability that you have, but you need to build that dream up and watch out for the dream stealer. going for small accomplishments along the way for however long it takes. So let's think about this for a moment. What outside evidence or results or proof can be seen when you accomplish your goals one step at a time? You'll start to see things change around you, little things, not major things, but little everyday things, things you may not even notice unless you are paying attention. If you're one of those who'd rather stay up late and get up late only to discover that your workplace doesn't fit your schedule and you roll out of bed cursing the alarm clock every morning, maybe you could start with the little change of going to bed half an hour earlier than normal. And maybe you'll see, in time of course, you can't train your body overnight, maybe you'll find out that you jump out of bed in a better mood and that your day will start better and that you'll get more done, and that the people around you that caused you problems aren't so hard to work with after all. It all starts by making one little change and adding to it every day. If you're creative enough, can you find the answer, yes or no? If you're determined enough, can you find the breakthrough, yes or no? If you're passionate, loving enough, can you get someone to help you, yes or no? If there's no way that you're committed, can you find the money, even if you don't have it, yes or no? So I said creativity, decisiveness, passion, honesty, sincerity, love, these are the ultimate human resources. And when you engage these resources, you can get any other resource on Earth. The key to kingdom success on Earth is initiating and planning the change. Change will happen with or without you. Time will move with or without you. Success, therefore, is always in your hands because everybody has to deal with both time and change. Start changing how you look at mornings, and sure enough, people will start changing how they look at you. 
When you start changing how you think, how you act, how you treat others, how you treat yourself, when you start responding instead of reacting to life, life will start responding to you. I'm telling you that you can do it with your lifestyle. You can do it with your sales career. You can do it with your management career. You can do it with any part of your life. Your dream is only a dream until it has a plan. You can dream of the kind of life you want. You can dream of the kind of change you want. You can dream of the kind of future you want. But until you wake up, and begin to plan to get there, it will only be a dream. When you get up tomorrow morning and are standing in front of the mirror getting ready for the day, remind yourself that you are somebody, that you are important, and that you can make the changes that will move you closer to your ideal future. The only key to regulating and controlling change is planning. If you don't have a plan, you have no protection. A plan doesn't only tell you what you want to do. A plan tells you what you don't want to do. And so the key to success on your journey through this planet is to have a clear plan. Is it so hard to do the little things that would improve my life? The way that our minds are designed is our minds are designed to stop you at all costs from doing anything that might hurt you. There are so many people in the world and, and, and you know you may be watching this right now and you have these incredible ideas and what you think is missing is motivation and that's not true because the way that our minds are wired and the fact about human beings is that we are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable or scary or difficult our brains are designed to protect us from those things because our brains are trying to keep us alive and in order to change in order to build a business in order to be the best parent the best spouse to do all those things that you know you want to do with your life with your work with your dreams you're gonna have to do things that are difficult uncertain or scary which sets up this problem for all of us the one thing we have in this world is we can't control the events, but we can choose what to focus on, we can choose what things mean, and we can choose what to do. Those three choices, those three decisions, really control our life. You can always make a decision that's always in your control. Staying with somebody that treats you like garbage is a decision. It is. Staying at a job that you hate is a decision. Staying in the body that you are not proud of is a decision. Is it going to be easy? No, it's not going to be easy to change. It's simple. It's your job to push yourself. It's not the smartest people who achieve success. It's the people who procrastinate less, make fewer excuses, as they take actions every day towards the goals that they want to achieve. Uh, indecision is the thief of opportunity. Uh, indecision means the door is still closed. Uh, indecision means the opportunity waits. Uh, indecision means what could be is postponed or may never be. If you want to be successful at anything in life, Never leave the sight of setting a goal without doing something that commits you to fulfillment. The next morning, the alarm goes off and um, I pretended NASA was there. It's the stupidest story. I literally went five, four, three, two, one. I counted out loud and then I stood up. And I, I'll never forget standing there in my bedroom. It was dark, it was cold, it was winter in Boston. 
And for the first time in three months, I had beaten my habit of hitting the snooze button. There were moments all day long, all day long, just like that five second moment in bed where I knew knowledge, what I should do. And if I didn't move within five seconds, my brain would step in and talk me out of it. Every human being has a five second window, might even be shorter for you. You have about a five second window in which you can move from idea to action before your brain kicks into full gear and sabotages any change in behavior. Your life is what you think it should be. That's exactly what you are right now. You are what you thought you should be. And if you don't like who you are, you got to change what you think you should be. What you think is more important than what you do. And so if you want to change, you got to work on this attitude bit. Decide, commit, act, succeed, repeat. The one thing that all the greats have in common is they sweat the small stuff. They pay very, very close attention to every detail. What makes you comfortable can ruin you. And what makes you uncomfortable is the only way to grow. What you are and what you become depends on how you use your time. The billionaire and the beggar both have 24 hours every day. The old and the young, the black and the white, the Indian and the Asian are all given the same amount of time every day. You cannot stop a day. You cannot stop an hour. But you can control how it will be used. Your life comes down to your decisions. And if you change your decisions, you will change everything. When you understand the power of a five second decision, and you understand that you always have a choice to go from autopilot to decision maker, everything in your life will change. You will be a different negotiator, you will be different in sales, you will be unstoppable in the gym, because you will realize the amount of garbage that you put in the way of your hopes, of your dreams, of your potential, of your confidence, of your courage. Everything comes down to the decisions that you make. Take ownership. Take extreme ownership. Don't make excuses. Don't blame any other person or any other thing. Get control of your ego. Take ownership of everything in your world, the good and the bad. Take ownership of your mistakes. Take ownership of your shortfalls. Take ownership of your problems. And then take ownership of the solutions that will get those problems solved. Take ownership of your mission. Take ownership of your job, of your team, of your future, and take ownership of your life. The first source of inspiration is deciding. Second source of inspiration is planning. And now, here's a big source of inspiration. Beginning. Getting started. Actually turning thought and the notes on the paper, the plans, actually now committing it to action. Getting started. I'm a humongous believer that ideas are and that execution's the game. Well, I think the one thing that discipline definitely does help you with is it helps you get things done. And when you get things done, when you, you actually do things, you, you have more success. If you have more success, and sometimes a, a big part of success is just not being f***ing lazy and just doing it. Yeah. Just get, that's like 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not going to feel perfect every day. If I felt, if I only worked out when I felt good, I'd be a fat f***. Discipline, it does start with 
waking up early. It really does. But that is just the beginning. And I always say that discipline is the root of all good qualities. But you have to absolutely apply it to things outside of just waking up early. It's, it's everything. It's working out every day, making yourself stronger and faster and more flexible and healthier. Discipline is eating the right foods to fuel your system. It, it's about disciplining your emotions so you can make good decisions. Doing the tasks that you don't necessarily want to do, but that you know will help you. The thing about self-discipline is that it is necessary for everything you do in your life. You have to be self-disciplined. Discipline is not punishment. It's not. If you change your mindset and really focus it on what discipline really is, you start to welcome discipline. You welcome self-discipline into your life. You people have to know you, not because, oh, he's a good salesman. Oh, he's a good this. Oh, he's an artist. People need to know you for one major thing first. He works. He produces. The guy's there every day. The guy's pushing and shoving. Because the truth is, no matter how good your ideas are, how good your art is, or how good your skill set is, if you're not working, man, if you're not vibrating at a frequency that people say, my God, how does that guy do all that? If you're not vibrating at that rate, if you're not working at that level, you're not going to make it.